Jonte Porter's feel-good return story to the NBA this season took quite a dramatic turn yesterday. So let's talk about these gambling allegations coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hail you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And on today's show, the NFL did pass its kickoff rule change. Harrison Mevis got to be a big winner from this, in my opinion. And I will say, this is something I should have been saying for a while, but I'll say it now. Addicts never win at gambling. I'm going to prove exactly why. And now for a rather awkward uh, transition. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. New customers join today and you'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And apologies to FanDuel and all of you out there for chuckling there for a moment, but the absurdity of this moment could not completely get past me. And for those of you who are unaware here, there was a story that broke yesterday, last night on ESPN.com about some unusual betting activity interest around prop bets about John Tay Porter one time in January and another time a couple, a couple months later just recently here in March and really ESPN's reporting and the athletics reporting both kind of concluding here that some rather suspicious activity around John Tay Porter's prop bets. And basically here is long story short here. This is according to the athletic just before Monday's game, ESPN reported Raptors center John Tay Porter was away from the team as he was subject of a gambling investigation by the league concerning two games that Porter left early. Porter's prop bets were the top money makers on both nights, according to the DraftKings Sportsbook Insights, published daily and distributed to media members, The Athletic confirmed. Porter's made three-pointers, total was set at 0.5. So a half, basically if Jonte Porter didn't make a three pointer, that was a good to go bet in both of those games. And he didn't attempt a three pointer in either game before leaving early. Here's an important note here. Once for an aggravation of an eye injury and once for an illness per the team's injury updates. Now let's just all pump the brakes here really quickly. Obviously, I would say as somebody who follows not only gambling and sports, but just understands statistical aberrations and all that good stuff, indeed, all of this looks very suspicious, without a doubt. But I also don't want to jump to any personal conclusions about Porter here, because to my knowledge, no one has accused John Tay in any of this reporting of actually doing anything wrong. So again, like Shohei Otani and his whole very strange and perhaps suspicious situation with Major League Baseball and and betting that that superstar player's going through, I think Jonte also deserves the benefit of the doubt at this point. We at least we Jonte at least deserves to have his side of the so, of the story said at the very least. So again, Let's not all jump to total conclusions here. At the same time, I definitely understand why the NBA would open up an investigation here at the very least, because according to sources with ESPN's reporting, well, typically a lot of times these sports books will set relatively low limits of maybe a thousand to two thousand dollars on these player props. But of course, there are sharks and bigger, bigger customers that can get preferential treatment. And according to this, this source, quote, people were trying to do whatever they could to bet John Tay Porter props against the Clippers. And then just a few days ago, 
This was the March game, the same thing. We had a bunch of people trying to bet the under for more money than what is the usual limit. So again, why the why is this all important? In a world where obviously the NBA and all of major sports have completely embraced legalized betting, most states in this union have embraced legalized betting. Obviously, the Locked On Podcast Network has embraced legal betting. But the problem with all of this is, and the problem when somebody like Calvin Ridley of the Jacksonville Jaguars, formerly of the Falcons, starts betting on football, Pete Rose, a manager, starts betting on baseball. The reason this stuff matters is it, be, is it calls all of the sport into question. And once the integrity of the sport is into question, you're now risking your fan base. Really, the entire business model is then risky. And to me, that's why this type of insider information is actually worse than with, say, corporate insiders in the stock market. Now, I'm not talking about political insiders here, politicians, bureaucrats who can actually affect policy. I'm talking about people in the actual company, because you can argue if somebody, say, had a bunch of stock and got some information before the public did, dumped said stock, well, you can make a pretty convincing argument that eventually that stock's price would have gotten to the price that it got to anyway. So it's hard to actually find a victim there. But Clearly, there are victims. If a person who is directly involved with a game and a prop, if they're if they're faking injuries, for example, as as is the suspicion here, quite clearly, that's the suspicion. Again, no one's accused John Tay Porter of anything here, but an investigation here is definitely understandable from the league's perspective. Because again, I think if John Tay Porter had anything to do with this, knowledge wise or anybody else who is involved in this, a coach, another player, anything like that. Perhaps it was another player who felt like he had some inside information on his teammate. For example, anything even close to this, and that player should be banned from the sport for life. I absolutely believe that because it's really not that hard of a rule to follow either. I would say, hey, maybe just don't bet on anything, but absolutely do not bet on your own sport. I'd even leave March Madness alone if I were in the NBA. Just the appearance of impropriety there is not worth the risk. Really, the more I think about it, the league and just leagues in general should probably work with their betting partners a little more and consider not offering these individual type player props in general, because it does seem to me that, especially compared to trying to fix an actual game result, hey, it's obviously a lot easier in theory to fix your own result, right? An own individual result, especially if you're going to go under a total, hey, just leave the game with a suspicious eye injury. Again, not accusing Jonte Porter here directly. I'm just talking hypothetically at this moment, again, just explaining why this kind of stuff is absolutely a big deal. And, and I will say for my part, I've been thinking a while now. I've been doing all these, these FanDuel sports book reads, and I'm the type of person who likes to put down a wager on occasion. But I'm also, in this particular element of my life, sports wagering, it's never been an addiction for me. I've always been able to easily control myself. Hey, put $20 here, $20 there. And if there isn't a bet that I like this weekend, well, then I'm not going to bet. In fact, I might not offer a, a bet on my podcast for the entire basketball season once it becomes clear that Missouri is not going to win. But people who do get addicted to gambling, and, and again, I can relate to this. Certainly, you go on a good alcohol bender, right? After a Mizzou victory or something like that, you've been tailgating all day. The Tigers take down Tennessee or something. You think, I'm going to keep celebrating. Let the good times roll. And naturally, that addiction thought starts creeping in. You hammer a few too many beers. And the next day, well, you hate yourself. That's kind of the bipolar nature of addiction. And Drunks, again, they're the king of the world, and then the next day they feel like the biggest idiots in the world. Well, that's very much what gambling is, too. You win one, you think you're a genius. You lose a few in in a row, and suddenly that shame spiral begins. I'll just tell you this. 
Again, I've seen that with myself on drinking on occasion. But when it comes to gambling, for some reason, I've been able to avoid that thought. Well, if you feel like you're having those type of thoughts, number one, yeah, absolutely. Talk to somebody if you need to, but I'm just going to promise you this. From my experience, one of the reasons I've been a, a winner the last couple seasons here at Locked On Mizzou giving out winners is because I don't have a diseased brain when it comes to this stuff. With alcohol, I'll be honest, sometimes it does get a little diseased, but with gambling, for whatever reason, I can avoid it. I'll just promise you this, there's never been an addict I've ever seen that's going to win because the problem is they'll just keep getting into to more picks and more picks, and the more picks you get into – there goes your edge. And that just, again, that's the disease of the brain thing. That's not rational thinking. That's just chasing the dragon. And that's something we should all avoid. And you know what? It is natural to wonder if this Jonte situation could have any effect on Missouri's recruitment of his brother, Javon Porter, formerly of Pepperdine, a forward who entered the transfer portal recently. Let's talk about that coming up here. In just a little bit, but yes, we do have to talk about FanDuel Sportsbook. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on spreads, money lines, player props. You can even pick who's going to win the whole thing. So just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. And passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply, eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Well, was that FanDuel ad read? Was that awkward enough for all of you? I think it was for me, for sure. I don't think my palms have been that sweaty since I wrote down my first trade at the Chicago Board of Trade all the way back in 2007 now. But, you know, seriously, I, I hope that m my friends over at FanDuel Sportsbook will, will help me stay employed at the Locked On Podcast Network. Hopefully this is not the last edition of Locked On Mizzou. We'll just have to see tomorrow. But in all seriousness, I do think there are a lot of people online that are being unfair right now to the Porter family, not just John Tay, but I did see one Missouri fan online say, keep Javon. Again, the former Pepperdine player entered the transfer portal, has a couple years of eligibility left. Keep Javon as far away from Mizzou as possible. Family is a disaster and an embarrassment to be affiliated with Mizzou. Well, first of all, I just think that's a patently unfair statement on quite a few levels, to be honest with you, but especially when it comes to judging Javon Porter or any human being based on the actions of their father, their brother, anything like that. That's just not that's just not the way the world is supposed to work, in my humble opinion. And, you know, Javon is in Paris right now, not sure what is going on. According to his social media, he is in Paris right now, not sure what's going on with his recruitment or with Taurus Reeds at the moment, not sure if that a, a potential delay there has anything to do with Jonte whatsoever. So I'm not going to... to 
to speculate there whatsoever without any information. We do know the portal is open for a few more weeks, and I thought Javon Porter was a good fit for Missouri, if not a perfect fit. So it's just going to be interesting to see where all this ends up. I just don't think it's fair to dismiss Javon Porter because of something that really Jonte hasn't even been accused of anything yet. So to go out on a limb and say, well, no more Porters ever, I, I just don't see how that's fair whatsoever. And you know what? I think that's about enough on basketball and gambling. Let's move to the gridiron. And by the way, just a quick correction here. Yesterday, I mentioned in my Heisman Trophy discussion, Dylan Gabriel said he was the Oklahoma Sooners quarterback. Well, that was true, except he transferred to Oregon this offseason. So my mistake there, I'd forgotten that Dylan Gabriel had transferred to Oregon, though I will say doesn't really change my conclusion from yesterday's program too much, though I guess since Bo Nix did well this past season at Oregon, perhaps Gabriel has maybe a little bit better odds to win the Heisman there than he did in Norman. That certainly is up for debate, but in my opinion, something that's not really up for debate is the new NFL kickoff rule that was approved this morning. I described it yesterday quite a bit on, on yesterday's program. I don't think there's any debate. This helps Harrison Mevis because the real question with Mevis is kickoff distance. Certainly isn't place kicking. One of the best place kickers in all of college football the past few seasons. I'm guessing Jeff Wolfert was probably wishing that the Missouri, that the NFL had this kickoff rule back in the day. But just to explain, I had some more information. And by the way, I attempted to describe as best as I could what I described as a bit of a needlessly elaborate kickoff system. Well, I will say, just go to my go to my X feed right right now if you want to see a better visual representation of what this play actually looks like. Because we saw it at the XFL level. I retweeted it. Just go to x.com slash locked on Mizzou if you want to have a good visual representation of what this play is all about. Just a couple tweets down. No, no problem there. So here's the thing. Again, last season in the NFL, about 20% of kicks were actually returned. The rest were touchbacks or kickoffs out of bounds. And if you combined college in the NFL, looks a little better, but it's still less than 40% according to the guy in this video anyway, worked for the XFL. Well, in the XFL, where the NFL is now essentially taking this kickoff rule from them, a 90% of the time a ball was returned. So to me, immediately, that is a much, much better outcome. And sure, some people who are having a visceral reaction to this rule chain saying, oh, they're just ruining football, put flags on everybody – I kind of understand that, and sure, you could simply argue that the kickoff should be moved back 5 to 10 yards and more kicks would be returned. You could make that argument, but all I'm really seeing is people just complaining without an actual solution. However, I would also argue that if you do the move the kicks back 5 to 10 yards, then I think we're still just chasing the same thing over time, distance over accuracy and skill. And I understand the the injury element here. A lot of people are, are worried about injuries on kickoffs. And in the past, while 6% of plays in football approximately are kickoffs, there's been studies that have said as much as 20% plus of the concussions occur on just those 6% of the plays, which are kickoffs. So I understand, I, I really do understand the injury part. Uh, that that is, that is totally valid for me as a fan of football and just entertainment. I just want a football skill position play to decide field position, whether that's, that's a combination of kicking, blocking, running, tackling, a lot more interesting than like, oh, let's just see how far our kicker can boot the ball into the back of the end zone. I'm just done with all that stuff. And I'm sure people, obviously, when the forward pass was invented, I'm sure there were a lot of people that said that that would ruin the game as well. I get it, though. My, my main thing is, don't just say this is bad because the endless touchbacks, to me, that's already bad. If you have a better solution than, than what's been offered here, 
by all means, I'm all ears. I'm not married to this new format, but I do think it's definitely better than what we've had. And if you're Harrison Mevis, you got to love it. It helps, to me, your ability to make an NFL roster next season because more than likely, the punter is probably going to be handling this new kickoff setup. And coming up, John Calipari appears to be staying while Conzo Martin has a new gig. And you know what? New Missouri baseball coach Carrick Jackson, in my opinion, is putting too much pressure on himself. I really believe that. I think he's almost being unfair to himself. And I want to explain what I mean coming up here in just a little bit. But first, our friends at Nissan are bringing you this week's March Madness Bracket Highlight, again, brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest. Just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. The Iowa State Cyclones can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves entering the tournament as one of the hottest teams in the country. They have a date with Illinois on Thursday in the Sweet 16. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. So former coach of the Missouri Tigers, Conzo Martin, now heading back to Missouri State, where he had previously been the head coach before. So another jaunt down Highway 63 for Conzo Martin. Frankly, I'm, I'm happy for the guy. Obviously, it didn't work out for Conzo ultimately here at Missouri. And, well, the, the Porter brothers and their injuries obviously didn't help things there that's for darn sure so but frankly I, I wish Conzo Martin well down there at Missouri State and John Calipari seems to be according to multiple reports and sources out there seems like he's going to be staying at Kentucky and quite honestly while there's certainly some things that I think Calipari could be better at if you're a Missouri fan and you're saying Oh, darn, I was hoping, uh, uh, you know, if you're a Missouri fan, you're saying, yes, John Calipari is still here because the game has passed him by or whatever. Well, Missouri hasn't exactly had the greatest success against Calipari over the years. So I don't know. I, I'm just not quite ready to be as dismissive as a lot of Missouri fans are. That's just me. But, you know, speaking of Conzo Martin, the Porters, of course, I brought up, brought up Javon Porter earlier and why no matter what happens here with him and Jonte and whatever's happening with the rest of his family, I, I think it's only fair to judge Javon Porter, for example, on his own individual merits. Whatever is happening, good or bad, with the rest of his family, I think you have to judge Javon just like all of us as individuals, just like that as individuals. And with that being said, it actually made me a little bit, I don't know if sad is the right word, but just, I don't know, I almost felt a little bit bad for Missouri coach Carrick Jackson. A recent quote he had here in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, he said, he's talking about being the first SEC, the first black SEC baseball coach in that conference's history. And on that, he says, for me, what I do understand is it's my responsibility to have success so that more opportunities come for other coaches that are minority coaches down the road. And I, I guess the reason that it makes me sad is I don't really actually think that this is true. Or at the very least, I don't think it should be true because let's be honest, if anybody's actually thinking that way, if anybody in a position of power at say, I don't know, LSU or Vanderbilt or one of these big time baseball institutions in the SEC, if in the future, one of their candidates to be a new baseball coach, one of their, their programs happens to be a, a black man, well, wouldn't that be the dumbest thing in the world if they based any of their thinkings on that individual based on Carrick Jackson's performance at Missouri for again for good or for bad to judge that person based on another person in a completely different circumstance in a different state and a different program 
just because they happen to have a, a, a same level of skin tone is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I mean, genuinely. And it's it's racism. That's all it is. One way or the other, both ways, I would consider that racism. So, again, I'm hoping that that's not really true. I'm hoping that people in athletic departments in the SEC in 2024 aren't that stupid. Maybe I'm just being naive here. Some of you are probably arguing that, but I just really don't think that's as true, at least as true as Carrick Jackson thinks that it is. I, I genuinely hope that I'm right. I really do, because that that's a sad commentary on our society if Carrick Jackson is wrong. And, and if he's right, that's unfair. It really is. So I don't know, just that that quote there. Just, you know, just triggered some thoughts there, and I just wanted to share with you everything that I was thinking here. Obviously, as a Missouri fan, I want Carrick Jackson to do well. As a Missouri fan, I'm a part of me is definitely proud that we are the first program that hired a black SEC coach. It is pretty shocking that there hadn't been a black SEC coach by this point. I'll certainly agree with that. That little bit of trivia definitely surprised me when it happened. But at the same time, I just think that whatever happens with Carrick Jackson here, whether it doesn't go well or it goes incredibly well and he's the best coach in the history of Missouri baseball, I just don't think either way that should affect another individual. It really shouldn't. Maybe it will, but if it does, that's a sad commentary on human nature. And with all that being said, thanks for joining me today on what was a very heavy sort of social issues episode of Locked on Mizzou, for lack of a better term. Definitely a lot of off-the-court, off-the-field discussion here, but a lot of stuff that gets back to the, the very, very nature of the sport itself. What What is sport? Well, it's entertainment. It's supposed to be fun, but as fans, we don't want faked entertainment. We've got movies. We've got television. We've got professional wrestling. We want actual integrity with our sports. And when that starts to come into question, well, the whole business model starts to come into question. So hopefully you all found this interesting. And hopefully next time on Locked on Mizzou, we'll have more actual on the court and on the field stuff to talk about because... That really is what I like to talk about the most on this here program. So until next time, I am John Miller, and thanks for indulging me here on Locked on Mizzou.